The word of the day today is goodbye. Every time I say the word goodbye, a skate punker actually lands a kickflip. There's a first time for everything. NoFX just recently wrapped up their entire career, and there are rumors that Fat Mike is selling fat records to hopeless records. Today, we're gonna bust into all that drama, but before we do, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Dan Frampton. I am the originator of blasphemous Norwegian ska core. Either that or I just make the most entertaining YouTube videos on the internet. I forget which one. Either way, if you leave a comment on this video within the first three hours of me uploading it, I will reply. I take three hour gang super seriously. It is criminal how small this channel is compared to how consistent I am and how talented I am. So let's change that with some engagement. <laughs> okay, on to the video. Skate punk band NoFX wanted to make it clear to us that they were not breaking up. They are retiring. And I don't know if I've ever had the word retire and punk rock in my brain at the same time. But I guess you can retire from punk rock. Now if you're not familiar with who NoFX is, I don't even know how you're on this channel. But I guess I'll give you the speed run of who they are. They kind of started in California punk rock band in the 1980s. In the 1990s, they were kind of one of the most popular underground punk rock bands going. Then in the 2000s, they got kind of political. The lead singer, Fat Mike, has a record label called Fat Records. I'll get into more of the details a little bit later on about all of this stuff, but now that band, No Effects, is retiring. And I'm over here secretly hoping that the Punk Rock Museum closes its doors forever too. Now my history with the band is very detailed and very rich, but they were essentially the first punk rock band that I actually became a fan of. It was them and Rancid that really opened my eyes to a lot of the stuff that was going on in the punk rock world, and I latched the f*** on, you know? But it was their cover of Straight Edge that led me to Minor Threat and all the wonders of the hardcore world. So I have a lot to thank Fat Mike and No Effects for. Now No Effects just kind of sing about the most immature topics of all time, so I kind of grew out of them in my 20s, but then got back into them in my 30s. And in my 30s, I just started making fun of them online all the time. So there really is a through line of my enjoyment of punk rock music that runs parallel with No Effects. And those videos where I'm making fun of Fat Mike, I've dubbed him Fat Michael Bartholomew the Third, and I've heavily criticized the opening of the punk rock museum. Because what makes Mike a little bit different than other punk rockers is he has a bit of like an entrepreneurial mindset. It was said that he went to school as a kid, he was a very good student, he was very clean, very sober, went to college, got real smart, and then after doing all that sort of stuff, started to become like a druggie and a rock and roller. And all of that rock and roll behavior was kind of adopted just to make himself kind of like the Mickey Mouse of his operation. What made No Effects cool in the early days is how relentless they were. They essentially took the Black Flag approach to recording and touring just non-stop. But Fat Mike took it to the next level with his like entrepreneurial businessman brain where he would be like doing zines and even starting his own label. All of that very similar to the Black Flag approach. And as much banter as there is in No Effects, there was a lot less infighting in No Effects than Black Flag. Just look at the longevity of those two bands. No Effects is still around to this day. They retired amicably, and Black Flag exists in like three or four different iterations depending on what court case is being filed. So Fat Mike really did set himself apart from everybody else because of how business-minded he was, because of how much a visionary he was, and how accepting he was to be the butt of the joke. He was just going to be the mascot of debauchery, and he was totally fine with that. He kind of forced this edgelord druggy persona onto himself so hard that it ended up becoming his real life. Because if you remember, he was a good boy growing up. He went to school, head of the class, good grades, went to college, and then started to do all this kind of debauchery to kind of enhance his image. But there's an expression in the wrestling world, and I think it very much applies to Fat Michael Bartholomew III over here. He worked himself into a shoot, brother. If you take a look at Fat Mike, you would never say that he was intelligent or charismatic, but he really is all of those things 
all wrapped up into one. And I gotta swallow my pride here, because over the last couple years, I haven't said too many nice things about Fat Michael Bartholomew III, but that was all in pursuit of the lols, okay? Right now, I have to acknowledge that this clown, that this provocateur, had an absolutely legendary, one-of-a-kind run. And to end it all off, they did three final shows at the Punk and Drublick Fest, and they offered those three sets on the internet so anybody with $40 in their pocket could plunk it down and watch the final three shows. You can go to veeps.com slash no effects and watch these shows for yourself right now if you want. But I think that that's pretty cool that they offered these three highly emotional, super historic sets on the internet to people if they want to pay. But if I know Fat Michael Bartholomew III and his penchant for opening up businesses, I think that he's going to open up a punk rock hall of fame just to induct himself and his band into. I wouldn't be surprised about that whatsoever. And I don't know if I'd be so angry about a punk rock hall of fame as I am towards the punk rock museum. The hall of fame, I think, could actually be kind of cool. The museum, however, will always feel like a Las Vegas money trap to me. So Fat Mike, for the love of God, buddy, stay retired. This is the first time in punk rock history that a band is gonna go all these years and end things amicably. All these other bands get back together for nostalgia runs. All these other bands get back together for money grab moments. But you, Fat Mike, you set yourself up so you do not have to do that, okay? You can legitimately retire a millionaire and have a wonderful rest of your life. And as mean as I have been to you online over the last couple years, there is no taking your place in punk rock history, Fat Michael Bartholomew III, and also the other members of your band. They're also legends. Shout out to El Jefe, Smelly, and the one and only Eric Melvin. Now kick back, it's time to retire. I still got a couple of your vinyl. I got three or four CDs. And they all mean a little bit more because of the way that you went out. There's a sense of closure and finality here that you don't normally get with punk rock bands. So if they spoil it, I will be forever angry at them and I will make a scathing video. But until then, special place in my heart. I like them, good for them, awesome, good job, no effects. You're a great band, you retired well, uh, glaze, glaze, glaze. And all of that leads us to his record label, Fat Wreck. What is he gonna do with this record label? Now, like I said, there are rumors that Hopeless Records are gonna be buying this thing, but that has not been confirmed, okay? Other sources have reached out to both parties, and yeah, I can't confirm that rumor. It is just out there in the rumor mill right now. And I think Hopeless Records would be a good kind of label to pick up Fat Wreck, but also I think Asian Man Records would be a good shout, even though I don't think that they could afford it. I also think that Fueled by Ramen would be a great shout, even though I don't think that they could afford it. But Hopeless Records, I think, have pockets deep enough that they can afford Fat Wreck. Now, I don't know if they absolve Fat Wreck and then they just run it kind of without the name. They just take the bands and put them into Hopeless Records and then blah, 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 blah. Or if they put another figurehead in front of Fat Wreck and have like the punk rock section out here on the side. Because Hopeless Records, yeah, they're kind of punk rock. They're kind of pop punk. They're kind of indie and shoegaze and kind of all over the place kind of thing. They're a little bit more polished than Fat Wreck. Maybe they could have no effects live on the side as kind of like the grimy sister operation or whatever. But either way, I got my eyes on this situation. And if this thing gets sold, I, I don't know if I'll make a full video of it, but I'll probably keep you updated somehow, some way. And that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. Did you like No Effects? Did you ever listen to No Effects? Did No Effects mean something to you as a teenager? Let me know down below. Like, comment, and subscribe. And until my next upload, watch another upload. And since this is the last time I'll ever get to say this, I gotta take advantage of it. Fuck no effects, man. They suck ass.